we are on our way to go catch some small mouths. We're getting to that time of year where it's just before the spawn and uh, these small mouths are putting on the feed bag, um, you know, eating their last big meal before they go bed up. And so uh, we're gonna go try to intercept them before they get too ornery and get on beds and uh, should be fun. So I was out last night on this body of water actually. I was kind of just poking around the shallows, kind of figuring out where exactly they were at because these small mouths are sliding up from super deep water into shallow water. And so trying to find them can give you a little bit of a fit. And so I was kind of scanning around in the shallows and actually started seeing some smallmouth show up on my screen. And I noticed that they were on transitions. I'm always trying to find transitions. And this particular spot was on an inside rock spine. It went from rock to sand in about five feet of water. And so I dropped down my trolling motor. And the nice thing about using Mega 360 is I can drop the trolling motor down and without driving over the spot, I can see the rock spine. And so that's super beneficial compared to driving over the spot, marking it with my waypoints to see my rock spine and then going back and circling back around and fishing it because I've already driven over those fish. And especially in five feet of water, you're gonna be hard pressed to you know, keep those fish there when you're in such shallow water. Once you get a more distinct line of rocks, um, at least last night, I could see on the Mega 360, there's a big line of rocks to my right and then I was just lining up the boat right on the transition line and I could just see the shadows about two to three feet on the inside of the rock line. And I could tell that they were fish, number one, because I could, I could see a little white streak with the shadow underneath. And two, every time that this 360 updates, the shadows would move. They would be in a different spot, which is pretty, pretty neat. And so I actually have my graph speed just about all the way up, just so I can keep updating as fast as possible to see where the fish are at which is pretty important because I don't want to be casting where they were, I want to be casting where they are. My range is set at 70 feet and so I'm, I'm casting what I think is roughly about 70 feet, letting it hit bottom and then slow rolling it back every once in a while. Tick the bottom, that one actually just hit a rock with it and then it's just dead weight. Not a big one, but he got it good. They are so chunky this time of year. It's unbelievable. You can see right in the top of the mouth. Good. They are putting on the feed bag. Certainly not a big one. I know that there's bigger ones here. We'll get him back in the water, but hit spot lock there. He was right on the inside of this rock spine. I don't know if you can see the boat's kind of moving here, but he was, I actually think he was on that rock right there and actually ticked it. And once you know it, about a second later, he was on. You know, naturally, smallmouth live in big bodies of water and that's exactly what we're on today. And there's so much structure out here for these fish to sit on. And so being able to, number one, cover water and be efficient with it, you know, that's where 360 really comes into play is I can pinpoint certain spots and get my precise casts, at least the ones that I really want to make, and then keep covering water as much as possible, making the right casts. And I, I'm able to do that with a swim bait as well. I really like, you know, swim bait fishing when I need to cover water fast, just because it's just a straight chuck and wind. And that allows me to, number one, fish it super fast, but yet being able to fish it so many different ways. I can swim it through the middle of the water column. Today, I'm swimming it on the bottom. That seems to be where they're at, but it really allows me to dial in exactly what these fish are doing. And then I can go back on them um, and you know cast different baits through them once I feel like I've picked off at least the aggressive ones with this swim bait. There she is. Woo! Big old meatball. Surprised he could even get out of the air, he was so fat. He got that thing T-boned. Oh, come here, come on. Oh, open your mouth. There, 
there she is. Down the hatch. <laughs> uh, swim bait, to me at least, is the most realistic comparison to a bait fish, at least for me. And, uh, you know, that's just where my confidence is, and clearly that fish thought the same thing as me. Just a little tiny bait fish. It's really cool, I'm able to line up my cast. A lot of times I'll just point my rod, I can see where my, three, my 360 is mounted directly in front of the boat. A lot of times I can line up my cast by literally just pointing my rod like that on my graph, line up my cast, be it right on. It's super important to be precise, because I mean, if you're, if you're five feet off, that fish won't always swim five feet over to get it. A lot of times, especially with smallmouth. They're so fat and a lot of times they're ornery. You gotta get them, get it right in front of their face before they eat it. A lot of times, you know, you're, you're fishing history and you can pull up to that spot today and there isn't a fish sitting on it. A lot of people just, oh, well, they're gone or they're not eating, move on, next spot. Well, I was able to just follow this break line and end up relocating the fish. There you go. Doesn't feel huge. Oh, it's a big black one. Oh. Wow, that thing is dark. Whew. Go ahead and hit spot lock. Well, he grew some shoulders on the way to the boat, I guess. Still not a great big one, but wow, this thing is pretty. Oh, come on. Oh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> uh. He had that thing choke too. Wow. See you, girl. You can throw a finesse swim bait on a whole plethora of different rod sizes, reel sizes. Um, but for, for me, um, I like something right in the middle. This is a seven foot medium. And then paired with a 3000 size reel that allows me to make nice long casts, a lot of line pickup really fast. I also have just an eight pound braid tied to an eight pound um, floral leader. And that also allows me to make super long casts super nice i can feel a lot of sensitivity with the braid um you know around these rocks and then i still have the invisibility factor of the floral leader so uh oh what did i hook Putting on a show. God. I get so excited over these brown bass. <laughs> oh, I love these things. Oh, they take you for a ride, that's for sure. Oh. Oh. oh, come here, buddy. Come on. go. God, they're so fat. Oh. Moving up. <laughs> oh. God, I cannot say enough. Little brown bass. They are, they are my favorite, I must say.